Hey everyone, uh, in this video we will learn about how the real-time collaboration tools like Google Docs and Miro would work behind the scene to enable multiple users work together seamlessly onto their platform and how the backend of these tools handle conflict resolution automatically. So there are two properties that these tools are supposed to satisfy. Number one, the data entered by any one of the collaborators should never be lost. That means if there are two collaborators, Alice and Bob, together working on a document, then none of their changes should be lost. And number two, all users should be able to eventually see the same version of the document. This is also called as convergence property, meaning all versions of the local copy of the document should eventually merge to the same version that is saved in the server. So um, this is how a Google Doc looks like when multiple users are collaborating on it. And this is how a mirror board looks like in action. So if we uh, think clearly, there are two clear objections that we can uh, make from here. Number one, there are multiple users who have the same document open onto their browser window and are making changes to this document. And number two, whenever there are any changes made by a user on their local copy, those changes are sent to all the other users via a server in real time. In real time means that there is a very less latency between which we are transferring those changes. So let's break it down and see how it's actually working in the backend. So we have multiple users who have these documents open into their browser window. That browser window would be a client. And if not a browser window, maybe they have opened it in a mobile device. So that's a client. And the client is connected to the server via some communication channel, which we are not talking about in this video, but they have some communication channel. So whenever a user makes a change to their copy in the browser, they send to the server an event. That's the only change event that we don't share the entire document, but we only share the event, the change event. And this event looks something like add X at position zero or delete Y from position nine or update a value from A to B and so on. So again, few points of observation over here that the connection between the client and server is bi-directional, meaning the client sends a change event to the server and also the server sends that change event to the other client so that the version has to be seen eventually. That is the one first observation. The second observation is whenever a change is made, only the changes are sent to the server, not the entire document. So what could be the possible scenarios that may happen over here? User A makes a change to version V1 at time T1 and V1 becomes V2. Now user B comes up and makes a change to the version V2 at time T2. So in this case, there's nothing conflicting as such because uh, the events are happening in a sequential format. So no conflict over here, nothing special to handle over here. The second case, user A makes a change in version V1 at time T1 and user B also makes a change in version V1 at time T1. But they are not conflicting. So when they are not conflicting, uh, basically, when they are making changes in different elements, so there is no scope of conflict. User A is making a change in element uh, A, B makes a change in element B, or they change pretty different uh, lines of the document. So the, these changes are not conflicting. So nothing special to handle over here. But there is a third case when user A makes a change at T1 in version E1, and user B also makes change around the same time in version E1. And the changes are conflicting. Maybe they have edited the same element or made the change the same word, same line. So these are conflicting changes. Let's understand this a bit more. So a simple way to understand conflicts is to think about Git and GitHub. So while using GitHub, what happens is there is a remote repository. Multiple users come in and they clone the remote repo into the local system and start making changes into the local. So let's take a use case when developer 1 makes a change to version v1, he creates a version v2 and pushes the code and merges it in the, into the remote repo. Now developer 2 makes changes to version v1 which he had in his local system. He creates a version v3, he almost makes the changes in the same lines as of developer 1. 
Now when developer 2 tries to merge the code into the remote repository, he gets an error that is called as resolve merge conflict. This example is of optimistic locking, meaning Git allows uh, users to make changes to the repo in their local copy, but when the merge happens, that is the time when it tries to resolve those conflicts. And those conflicts are not automatically resolved. There is a manual intervention of the user or the developer involved in resolving those conflicts. There's a second example of seeing how conflicts arise that is of transactions in databases. So when multiple requests are uh, arriving in a database when they are trying to access the same piece of data, maybe the same rule, then in order to comply with the ACID properties of database, the isolation property in ACID, the database provides a lock to the first transaction so that no other transaction can make changes till the first one is done. And this way of preventing conflicts is called as pessimistic locking. Now, real-time collaboration tools do not use any of these because there the server itself has to do the merging so that no data is lost and the version has to be consistent. And over the years, two commonly used techniques have come up to do this. So the two techniques are number one, operational transformation, and number two, conflict-free replicative data types. So before moving to the actual techniques, let's understand the workflow first. User makes changes to their local copy and then send the changes to the server. The server is responsible for merging those changes to a final state and send updates to the other users so that the version of their site becomes consistent with other users by using one of these techniques that we'll be learning. So before moving forward, let's understand the problem that these techniques are trying to solve. Uh, what inconsistencies might arise in our document if we do not use any of these te techniques? So for that, let's uh, let's assume there is a there are two users, Alice and Bob. They have a document open with a string BC written on it. Now Alice inserts a character A before B at index zero. So the string becomes ABC and the indexing becomes zero one two. At the same time, Bob was editing the document from BC and he inserted d at index 2 so the string becomes pcd and the indexing is 0 1 2 now you see the two uh, local copies are different they don't have the changes as of now of each other now these changes are sent to the server server tries to resolve those changes and bring the document to the same state but there are no special techniques we are doing over here so the server just sends in the doc uh, in the updates as such so the server Sends it, uh, sends insert A at zero as it is to Bob, and uh, Bob's operation is also sent as it is, insert D to add to, to Alice copy. So, what happens after applying insert D at two? It was zero, one, two. When we inserted D, it becomes ABDC. And for Bob, when we insert A at zero, it becomes ABCD. So, you see, there is an inconsistency in the two state of the document that we have eventually so operational transformation or ot is a technique that transforms the concurrent operations when such conflicts arise while merging them we use transformation functions while uh, creating the algorithm and those functions ensure that the effect of an operation is adjusted to reflect the changes made by other operations this is a widely used technique. The research on it started from 1989 and it lasted till 2006 till CRDTs were discovered. And it is still widely used in tools like Google Docs and MS Office. So now let's see how operational transformation saves the day for us. We have the same example where Alice and Bob have a document open with BC written on it and the string is indexed at 01. Alice makes a change, inserts A at 0 position. And B makes a change at D, inserting D at position 2. Now, when the server receives these two events, it does not pass on the events directly, but it checks that these two are conflicting how I need to change, which one I need to change. So, if you see clearly, the insert D2 operation has been transformed to insert D3. Server has considered that while inserting A at 0, the length of the string has increased by 1. So, that is why the operation has increased the index for insertion of D by 1. 
and using this if you observe the final tree with a uh, string becomes a b c d at both alice and bob's end this is how operation transformation of op transforms the operation insert d2 to insert d3 and resolves conflict so operation transformation uh, relies on three main components number one is operation these are like atomic units of change that represent specific modification that is being made to the shared data such as insertion solutions and update number two is the transformation function this is the core logic that resides in the application code and does the conflict resolution part this is not straightforward and requires a lot of complex functions resolving different cases different edge cases that might arise based on the conflict and number three is the operation state this refers to the state of data at any given point of time considering all the operations that have been applied for example after applying operation one by user a operation two by user b and so on so while operation transformation solves the problem over here but there are still some limitations to it number one is operation transformation requires all operations to go through a single server which does the syncing of all the changes across all users now this becomes a serious drawback in designing a highly distributed and scalable system while google docs and ms office have handled it well enough to make it feel seamless for users but it still remains complicated for new systems to develop and number two implementing the transformation functions in ot algorithm is very complex and not easy to maintain it requires a lot of time and effort from the team developing it so while overcoming the limitation of operational transformation the researchers came across a new technique in around 2006 called as the conflict free replicated data types or the crdt so this is basically a type of data structure which uses operations that are commutative that is order dependent and associative that is grouping independent so instead of writing complex functions to convert one function from version 1 to version 2, this data structure demands that the operations being fed to it are created in a way that they support commutative and associative properties. And when these operations are applied in different orders, they just produce the same result in general. The final state of the data is consistent or across all replicas. And since this is a data structure, not an algorithm, so many algorithms can be used to achieve the same result. And one very common way of doing this is using fraction indexes. Let's understand this with an example. So here we are using the same example that we have been using before for operational transformation. We have two users, Alice and Bob. They have the same document open with a string BC written on it. But here there is one difference. Earlier we were using integer indexes that are 0 and 1. But in this case we are using fractional indexes that is 0 0.5 for B and 0 0.75 for C. So what happens in this case is we assume the entire document to be lying on a number line between 0 and 1. And whatever characters or whatever elements we add to the document, we assign the index between 0 to 1 to that element. So if any element is assigned before B, we assign it an index less than 0.5 and if between B and C, we assign index between 0.5 and 0.75 and so on. So in this example, as Alice tries to insert A before B, so the client at Alice's site automatically uses the CRDT algorithm and assigns an index that is 0.5 which is less than B and the string becomes ABC with the corresponding indexes. Similarly, at Bob's end, since Bob is trying to insert a character after C, so the index assigned to it is greater than the value of index at C, which is 0.875. And now these two changes have been made to local copies of the users. Now these changes are sent to server. Once these changes are sent to server, like insert A at 0.25, insert D at 0.875, the server does not have any difficulty because these are like independent changes based on the value of the index. You can easily add and assign the character at that particular position. And as you can see, the final state of the two strings is consistent, that is A, B, C, D. 
So we see that both the techniques operation transformation and CRDT are able to solve the purpose and can be used for conflict resolution and actually both of them are being used widely in the real-time collaboration tools. But the choice of one of these in our system design just boils down to trade-offs. So depending on our use case and the requirements and the complexity that we are ready to handle, we make a choice. For example, operation transformation needs a central server while CRDT does not. So in our system design, if we do not want to rely on a central server, we can make a choice of CRDT, but otherwise we can choose operation transformation. Another case is operational transformation mostly works with single leader application while CRDT can be used both with single as well as multi-leader application. So if we have a choice like we want to trade off between performance, latency, etc., then we can make a choice between operation transformation and CRDT over here. The third point to consider is that implementing the transformation functions in operational transformation is a highly complicated task. It takes time and effort and needs a lot of maintenance. While CRDT is, the algorithm for CRDT is basically very simple. It's just how we are storing the data using the data structure that is important and needs to be properly implemented. So that is a trade-off that we can do based on our requirements and the use cases that we need to handle. So that is all for this video. If you like the content, do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. There are many more videos to come. Thank you and have a good day.